Today, we can explain most earthquakes through the theory of plate tectonics. The surface of our entire planet is made up of a number of moving plates. These tectonic plates fit together like giant pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. They sit on top of a hot, plasticky mantle of rock that's in constant motion. The cold, rigid plates move slowly over this hot, soft interior, just a couple of centimetres a year. But as they move, they grate and tug and get caught up with each other at the plate boundaries. And that's how earthquakes begin. You get a real sense of how plates move when you come up to a fault line like this. As the vast plates kind of slide past each other, they get snagged along their edges. When they get stuck, the pressure builds up along fault lines. Eventually, the strain gets so great that the fault ruptures, releasing huge amounts of energy, which shakes the ground for miles around. This is Novaya Zemla Island in Russia, one of the Soviet Union's secret nuclear test sites. The Soviets began testing their weapons in this remote place in 1954, at the height of the Cold War. Over a period of 35 years, hundreds of nuclear devices were detonated. But of course, the Americans were determined to find out exactly what the Russians were up to. And rather than send in their spies, the Americans came up with a brilliant plan. They decided to do some long distance spying using seismometers. Seismometers are instruments that can register and measure shaking ground from thousands of miles away, even from the most secret locations. Of course, nuclear explosions shake the ground. So seismometers would be able to record every explosion happening deep inside Russia. So in 1961, the Americans installed 120 seismometers at sites all around the world. And soon they were recording every Soviet nuclear test. But all the time this network of seismometers was recording nuclear explosions, it was also monitoring the natural phenomenon that shakes the ground all over the world, earthquakes. And that earthquake data produced a major surprise for science back in the 60s. Earthquakes weren't scattered chaotically across the planet. They followed a narrow set of lines around the globe. In their search for nuclear explosions, they'd coincidentally created an accurate map of the world's earthquake zones. And what was the significance of this map? Well, the earthquake lines revealed the hidden edges of the Earth's tectonic plates. Now, in the 1960s, the theory of plate tectonics was a revolutionary new idea, but it was still just a theory. Now there was proof, because the seismometers were able to measure the direction the plates were moving in during an earthquake. For the first time, geologists had solid evidence that showed how all these plates were moving against each other at the fault lines and causing earthquakes. Who could have imagined that spying for nuclear secrets would end up providing key evidence for the most important geological theory ever developed? the theory of plate tectonics. This discovery was a major breakthrough for earthquake science. 
And one of the few good things to come out of the bitter Cold War rivalry between America and the Soviet Union. Measure that shaking on a scale of magnitude, sometimes called the Richter scale. Each number on the scale registers an earthquake 10 times larger than the last. So a magnitude 6 earthquake is 10 times larger than a 5, and an 8 is an earthquake 1,000 times larger. The Cascadia Fault lies on what geologists call a subduction zone. A subduction zone is where two giant plates meet head to head and one of them gets pushed right down under the other. Subduction zones can produce the biggest earthquakes on the planet. Generally speaking, if you have two great masses of rock and you're scraping them one underneath the other, they're not going to move very easily. You're going to get a lot of friction there. And I, I liken it to sort of two cheese graters pushing past one another. Very, very difficult to get any smooth sort of movement there. Subduction zones cause earthquakes when the plate that's being pushed down gets stuck. As it pushes, the upper plate gets squeezed and distorted. Eventually, the strain becomes too much. The upper plate slips, and that's what creates a rare event, a megathrust earthquake. The power of an earthquake depends on the size of the fault that breaks, and there's something unique about subduction zone earthquake faults. With most earthquakes, only one small part of a fault line shifts, the part that's snagged. The section that breaks can cause violent shaking and devastation in the immediate area. But when a subduction fault ruptures, something quite different happens. It can unzip along the entire length of the fault line for hundreds of kilometres.